Indonesia's no. Islamic Council declares cryptocurrency haram. <laughs> On November 11th, Indonesia's National Ulema Council, or MUI for short, declared that cryptocurrency is haram, or religiously forbidden. According to Asro Run Niam Shole, the MUI's head of religious decrees, cryptocurrencies constitute uncertainties in their use and behave like wagering. The MUI is a body of Islamic scholars with significant influence in the country as the council advises the government, including Indonesia's finance ministry, on its adherence to Sharia law. Cryptocurrency is currently being traded as a commodity in Indonesia, with trades between January to May of 2021 reaching uh, $25.96. Uh, no, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. Way wrong. Over almost $26 billion. Um. according to Indonesia's finance ministry. Uh, however, the Indonesian government does not officially recognize the buying power of cryptocurrencies as legal tender in the country. Despite the MUI's latest announcement, the country's central bank, Bank Indonesia, has been planning to create a digital currency, but has not yet announced any official plans. D did this have any impact on the price? On, on like... How many people in India? Yeah. Um, how significant is this uh, council? Like when it comes to... I, I know, I know. Okay, so yeah, I know like the government pays a lot of attention to them because I remember like um, looking long time ago, looking at some, the, the, these people like issue um, their opinions on things that the government takes very seriously there. But do the people like... Are, do they have a, a lot of credibility uh, and within the people? Like, do people follow their... Because the good thing about cryptocurrency is that eventually, uh, eventually when we could find ways to have exchanges that are based on the blockchain themselves, then there's going to be no government that's going to be able to stop people from getting into cryptocurrencies. You know what I mean? Like right now, the only... So right... So even if your coins are hidden, even if you're, if, even if the government cannot like get rid of any cryptocurrencies because they're just up in the blockchain, there's not, there's not a force in the entire world. Even God Himself cannot come and like remove any of these currencies, right? So the only way that the governments could actually influence the market is by taking actions against the exchanges that these coins are being traded on, right? And eventually like for example coinbase or binance or stuff like that right but eventually um the exchanges themselves i think are going to be challenged by you know systems built by blockchain that will make people be able to swap coins um with each other um independent from the exchanges themselves and, and when that happens there's nothing anybody in the world can do from people getting access to crypto completely anonymously unless it's bitcoin which is not at all anonymous at all monero monero is the anonymous coin by the way anyways that's another discussion this is not financial advice i don't want anybody to use this but i'm just no, saying does this have no, I said uh, I'm not a financial expert. Don't take any of this as a, a advice for you two guys to invest in anything. However, I would I just want to I, I just want to ask, um, do, do do we have any idea of whether or not people in Indonesia are going to be influenced by this and just buy less cryptocurrencies because of this ruling? Like, do we know anything about that? So, like I said, at this point, it is not clear what impact this ruling will have on cryptocurrencies in Indonesia from an official governmental perspective. Um, so it probably will influence some Muslims. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know, have any data on how influential um, or credible this uh, council is seen uh, as by the Indonesian public. Interestingly um, enough, um, the Ulima Council uh, did say if cryptocurrency as a commodity or digital aspect can abide by Sharia tenants and can show a clear benefit, then it can be traded. So there are conditions in which you can have it, but in the elements where it is, there is uncertainty, they're basically comparing it to gambling. That is so clever. This is like getting this this is getting zakat 
this is this is basically like if you want to make sh- hey th- you know what they're saying they're like if you want to invest in crypto go ahead but make sure you give us a cut right because that's how you would justify because if you be, like if you basically give some you know some of your earnings to religious organizations to islamic organizations you would be like I am helping the Ummah, I'm helping Islam by doing trading. So because like, I don't know, I give 5% of it or you know, or 20% of it or whatever to to for the growth of the Islamic community. So that makes it justified. So in, in a way that they could basically, they're like, make sure we, we get our cut. By the way, um, what if, what if we make it, what if we start a token, an Islamic token? Like we should do that. Like the I, the Kaaba token, the Allah token. Um, Wait, I like the, the sound the, of this. The Imam Ali token, the Imam Hussein token. We could have a like a we could have a Sunni versus Shia competition, just to see like whether the Omar token is going to increase in price faster than the Hussein token. We should have a Yazid <laughs> token. We should have a Yazid token. <laughs> oh snap! I, well, um, I was thinking yeah. of like maybe we could have like a a, a Tawheed token. Like it's just it's like the token to rule them all. Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that isn't that Pocky Dad? What was it? I don't know. Yeah, that, we, we all, already have it's that. It's all a mystery to me. Uh, yeah, it, it is Pocky Dad. Pocky is the is the Allah of the cryptocurrency. Um, wait, <laughs> I wanna. <is> it, <laughs> um. Why? Why? What was it? Was there a reason? Like which hadith or Quranic verse did they use to make this haram? In in the articles that I read, they didn't list um, any specific hadith. They were just talking about the wagering and the uncertainty and the potential harm as reasons why it's forbidden. So the <laughs> talk fear <Yeah>. token. <laughs> Good. We need a no. We, we need a takia <laughs> token. Wait, say that again. Why is it haram? Sorry, I was in. Oh my is, god! Is because, because of because of the potential harm, because of the uncertainty, oh. because it's it's like wagering. Oh, okay. So it's they're like saying gambling. it's like betting. Okay, okay. We should tell them that you could make, um, you could make smart contracts, okay, on the blockchain that will automatically um, pay your zakat. Okay. Like you would oh, then, like, snap. yeah, I, like tell them that. Tell them that you could, yeah, you could be on the, on any of the smart contract um, pla- um, e- ecosystems like Ethereum. You could make it so that if um, you know people who are abiding by certain contracts will automatically. You could make a smart contract that like Muslims who are doing trading and the Muslims who will, like have that smart contract. It, their zakat just comes automatically out of their profit and goes to an Islamic community. Tell them that. Tell them, like, do you still want to make this haram after that? Okay, so there's that. Um, this might be a good... I, You know, I, I also think, like, it would be a good thing. I think it would be stupid because if these people realize what the bo- bo- what bl- blockchain technology could do, like, they are really holding themselves back, right? Like, this is, like, kind of, like, they said no to the internet, and now they're all over the internet. You know, when TV, when radio came out, they were, like, against the radio. When the TV came out, they're against the TV. When the internet came out, they were against the internet. And now they're everywhere on the internet. This is, again, it's the same thing. Now blockchain technology is a thing. Eventually, we're going to have so many different Islamic, you know, blockchain ecosystems. Like, that's, I could tell you that's going to be a thing, okay? That is Did definitely you know- going to be a thing. The the central bank of Bahrain has licensed a Sharia compliant cryptocurrency exchange. No way! Oh my! Yeah, so Bahrain, okay, so like Bahrain, is into they, it. It's called know, see, coin. They, it's called Coin Mina, as in Middle East. <laughs> <Bahrain. laughs> that's Isn't amazing. that great? <laughs> see, that's it. <laughs> they should have a halal coin. Halal coin. You know? Do you? Is it haram or halal? Well. It's in the name, <laughs> right? So, um, but I do, I, I do hope that they go the Indonesian route because, like, the the profit potential for the young people and the crypto market is so high that if you make these haram, then you're just gonna make more people do go pick the haram way. Like, I hope mm. more they're not as smart as the Bahraini that reverse people. psychology. 
Yeah, 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 exactly. Like get them, give, give, give us more Muslims who are leaving Islam because of you limiting how they, what they <laughs> do, please. That would it's be interesting. Great. Coin Mina is available to residents of Bahrain, uh, the Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and Oman. It's available to wait. So it's not, it's not any, we can't buy it. Like it's not trading on an exchange. What the hell? Oh, this was just when it was launched in January. Maybe it's oh, okay, okay. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Would you buy an Sharia Islamic... compliant crypto? <laughs> Sharia compliant. We should certified we should by the Sharia ha- Review Bureau. <laughs> we should f- figure. We should talk to some programmers. Make a haram haram token. We should get. We should have a friendly competition. We should have like some Muslims to come and make a halal coin. And in competition to that, we should make a haram coin, right? And we just see like it would compete in price. Like people could people could vote on which coin they believe in by just buying their co- like investing in the token that they believe in the most. And we see whether the Muslim community will invest more in the halal coin or the non-Muslim community will invest. It would be a friendly competition. I think the haram coin should actually involve something haram. So I think it should actually involve like some riba. It needs to involve some usury. This is how it it makes it actually haram. It should be like, like, it should, it should, some of the percentage of like whatever people invest in should go towards like an orgy. Or something. What? Make it cooler. Yeah, like we have we have orgy parties. Maybe that's not a good idea during the pandemic. But something haram, um, like some haram activities. That is, that is usury also... would be the easiest one. It's already financially it's not, involved. It's not very clear. But it needs to be sexier. It needs to yeah. be healthy and sexy. It needs to be juicy. Yeah, we'll think. We'll think about I it. I like we'll, my we'll, idea. We'll, personally okay fine but tell it guys if we want if we want to if we want to make a new token and start like making it available and make a haram coin where like we could say like 10 percent of whatever i don't know how the math works in these things could go towards endorsing haram activities okay so tell us oh family planning like we can make Hmm. like Support providing support for women who want to like, get abortions or something like that. That was how Ramadan. Definitely, yeah. that would get you excommunicated uh, from the Catholic Church. Yeah. So I think that, and it's also a, it's Ram also enough. good. It's a good cause as well, right? Like we're getting more choice for women. <laughs> um. All right. Oh my god! Oh my god! Again. Anna is saying you could put a little pig as the coin's logo because I don't know. In America, we have piggy banks. You keep your money in little pigs, so that's yes. act, like you could do a fun like little double entendre. Like it, that's so cool. Haram coins with the pig as the logo. Oh my god! A little it's piggy genius. bank. That's so perfect. It's genius. It's genius. How do we make this happen? Somebody, some programmers, reach out to us. Um, email us. Where, should, where can they email us if somebody wants to help us make a new token? Uh, Susanna at atheistrepublic.com. Susanna at atheistrepublic.com. Email us if we want to help us make this coin. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fantastic. I want to make my own coin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Hey, guys. If you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.